So we've got Paul here. He's one of our uh, Hearns Racing drivers. He's uh, very, very good to us on uh, representing our products and, and tearing around the racetracks. So last week we touched on the new BD10 uh, LCR the, with the rear tow control system. Mm -hmm. um, and Paul's bought, uh, got one from us and built it up and right. brought it in to talk about it. Super so, quick. Super quick. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for having me on the show, first of all. Really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you for coming. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. I think you're probably definitely the first person in Australia with one of those. Because <laughs> I arrived, I saw Brad open the box, so I just might be, who knows? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so picked it up the same day and built it by the next morning, pretty much. I got a little trouble with the wife, so I had to give it a day. But, uh, <laughs> right. you know, the next day after, I, uh, I sat down and got to the build. And, uh, Brilliant. Yeah, it was, uh, it was actually a really fantastic build coming from the, uh, the BD10 to the, yeah. uh, the new car. Um, really nice, actually. Yeah. Very easy build. Um, yeah. The manual is in Japanese, so anyone that gets the new car, make sure you download the manual. Um, you can get it for free online. Or study Japanese. In English. Yeah, in English, so uh, easy fix on that front. But uh, yeah, really, really nice build. Came together well. Brilliant. So we have the BD10, which is the previous car from last yep. year. And this is the BD10 LCR. So let's pop the top yeah. camera so we can actually put them side by side. Yeah. So talk us through some of the changes, Paul, of, of what you felt were, were different or the main things. Because obviously you've owned both cars and raced both of them. Yeah, um, yeah, So definitely. how did this one come together and how is it, what was you think the main points are? So uh, with, the, with the new car, if we take a look at it, um, really the main difference um, when you first take a glance, uh, the shock towers. So the front and rear shock towers have actually significantly, uh, significantly lowered um, to aid in high speed stability and, uh, and traction, which is a really nice feature. A um, few other things that really stand out are the upper bulkheads. Yeah. So if you take a look at the upper bulkheads, they've been, um, they kind of shaved off a little bit of material. Let's see if you can put them side by side. Yeah. Right? So we have a uh, two link position on the new car now, um, compared to the older one. Let's see. Shock tower, I don't know whatever you guys can see, but there's a, there's a substantial difference in the, in the actual shock tower. We're talking about a couple of millimeters, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah. actually quite a few mils. So it really should help with, um, like I said, the high speed stability and um, also the traction. So the car yeah. shouldn't be as kind of uh, squirrely when yeah. you're coming out of the corners and then going really quick. Fantastic. Um, another really uh, nice feature, I was actually talking to Brad about this earlier today, is the suspension package. Yeah. So even though we're running the same springs um, as the previous car, uh, we have new diaphragms and O-rings on the front and rear which uh, really just make the suspension super soft oh, and supple. It's buttery smooth, isn't it? Yeah, so I mean, I guess hoping moving forward, you shouldn't have to do as much as I many guess. rebuilds yeah. and maintenance on the car. It should be a little bit more predictable. Hmm. So these cars are really, really delicate to the degree. They, they've got so much fine tuning that the, yeah. the, the stiffness of an O-ring makes a difference. On, on, and you feel the difference in the performance. Obviously. Yeah. And yeah, most people don't realize just simply changing the camber half a degree or even a degree can really, really change the uh, characteristics and the handling of the vehicle. Definitely. So yeah, we have that and probably another standout feature that most people have noticed is the, uh, the rear shock tower, uh, the rear body post on the shock tower now. So we can actually mount the body uh, more flat. So you're not gonna have it kind of um, oscillating or bouncing up and down. Yeah. Um, and this is, you still have the option of course to run the standard shock tower with the uh, body mounted posts uh, vertically, uh, vertically or um, horizontally as well on the vehicle. I guess the challenge will be actually positioning the body in the car. That yeah. will be a new learning curve for all of us. <laughs> yeah. Mounting bodies on yeah. racing cars is always a challenge. Yeah, and the horizontal holes definitely make it a little bit harder. I've had a little bit of experience in the past with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a, a more of a pain to mount it with the right. horizontal body posts. So I really do like the, uh, the Aromax um, body mounting uh, yes. magnets. So. Um, if you have a chance, pick up those because they really, really do help out in terms of aligning the body and mounting the body. Yeah. Um, a little bit more tricky on the rear end. Um, there's some measurements you can get online. It's approximately 100 mil, and I think from memory it was 39 or 37 mil um, when you go from the top to the bottom um, in terms of mounting the uh, body posts. But if you make any mistakes, just make sure you get the Yokomo um, patches. Yeah, the, the patches. patches. <laughs> yeah, the patches yeah. They're a lifesaver. So. Um, you know, even if you're off a couple mil, that'll save the day. That, that's right. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and one thing you told me before that you noticed is that the actual build of the car, the whole car, is lower than the wheels. Yeah, you know? so this is kind of something that really 
kind of tripped me out. I don't know if I can show it like this, but if you actually look at the uh, the car, the whole thing is less than the diameter of the uh, actual oh, wheels. Actually, that's so a very good point. Fits, fits inside the wheels here. Can we yeah. see that in the top camera there? Yeah, yeah I think yeah. we can lift and see. That would be actually good. Let's see if we can compare to the older car. So you can see shop this car is a shop little car was a bit higher. Yeah. It's a big difference. Huge difference. But. Yeah, I mean, maybe if you don't have the front uh, body post, you could even drive it upside down. <laughs> Pretty much. That would be interesting. <laughs> you, can, but, you can jump on a curb and drive upside down. Yeah, but I mean, you can really see how Yokomo just try to really get the uh, center of gravity as, as low as possible. Absolutely. And for, for someone that's racing, uh, really the aim of the game is just to try and get around the track as fast as possible. Absolutely. Keep the center of gravity as low as you can. Definitely. And um, yeah. And, and you've fitted it with a couple of options. Um, obviously being the, the white belts here. So you've got yeah. the new Yokomo release low friction belts. Every, everybody knows white belts make you go fast. That's Absolutely. right. That's so, right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's definite, uh, definite must have. Um, this car also has the uh, the rear tow control yeah. as well. So really, really cool tuning aid. I'm not sure if we can really show it off today, but um, basically if you were to compress the vehicle from the back, you can see that the, uh, the, the tow goes in and you can adjust that with um, the bump up or down by just adding or removing shims. So yep. another really cool tuning aid. Um, definitely worth the extra couple of bucks if you're going to get the kit. And it comes in the kit now. Before there was yeah. no option to get it in the kit. Mm -hmm. Now it's, what, it's like a hundred hundred dollars dear. Yeah, yeah. and you have all this yeah. additional yeah. ability of tuning. That's right. Um, um, which uh, is definitely worth it. Yeah, so the kit does come with um, uh, plastic on the rear end. Um, but I think I just grabbed the last uh, graphite. Yeah, I got some graphite, graphite arms for it yep. in arms the RTC. Yeah, 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 which is uh, which is nice. So yeah, great tuning option. Uh, maybe not won't work at every single track, but it's definitely a nice uh, item to have to kind of play around with Different. and see what Fantastic. works at your local track. For those that are new to this, even the the material of the arms can adjust, can change the the um, the performance of the car. So we've got plastic oh, arms and graphite, yeah. which is a bit stiffer. So so there's so much tunability. Mm -hmm. uh, what, one thing I like to show are the number of uh, holes on the bottom of the chassis here. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, all these holes are designed to add or remove a number of screws to change the flex. Yeah. Flexibility. Right. Yes. Um, so, so the car obviously will have a flex, uh, I guess, in this direction a little bit. Let's see if you probably can't see on camera. Maybe you can see a bit, but that flexibility is really important mm -hmm. if you have high grip or low grip kind of situations, and you can tune it. Here we go. That's better. Yeah, so for, for us guys that are running on the asphalt, uh, we mainly stick to the uh, the graphite chassis. Yeah. And um, yeah, the more flex you can get out of the vehicle, obviously the more the more traction you're going to get. And you know, the aim of the game is just to try and get around the corners as fast as, as possible. Can, yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. So, yeah. If you look at some of the other vehicles that come with the aluminum chassis, those are mainly for carpet. They're trying to stiffen things up. And even on this vehicle, you do have a uh, different braces in the back that you can add or remove to, to adjust the stiffness. Yeah, yeah. Adjust the it's stiffness all about pushing the tires into the ground as as best possible to, to generate that traction. So yeah. much tunability. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it can uh, can be a little overwhelming uh, at a certain point, but uh, well, especially if you have Japanese instructions, that couldn't help. Yeah, that would yeah. be interesting. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> I'm brushing up, but I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's a very nice. Uh, Fantastic. Nice and when when do you think will be its maiden voyage? Uh, so hopefully I will uh, try and get out there this weekend. Yep. Um, and uh, get at a couple Temple Stone. That's right. At yeah. TFTR, our local one of our local tracks here in Melbourne. Definitely. Flying the flag for uh, Hearns yeah. and Yokomo. So if you see me out there, make sure you come by, say Definitely. hello. Um, if you have any questions on the vehicle, I'll be happy to help uh, answer anything you uh, you might that might come up. And if you want to give it a go, just don't break it. But you're more than welcome <laughs> to uh, <laughs> take it for a couple of laps Brilliant. on the track. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, Very thank good. You. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for coming in today, Paul, and yeah, sharing everything you. with us. Is there any okay. questions or Does anything any that questions? anybody would like to ask Paul in relation to the We're still, uh, still guessing the car, meanwhile. Yeah, so still guessing uh, the car. Let's see if I can bring it up in the middle here. Thanks for coming in today, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And we'll, uh, we'll see you around. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, guys. So, right. let's see if you can keep guessing the car. Otherwise, in the next five minutes, we're going to have to reveal the actual name. So, I hope you can say it. I can say the name. <laughs> we have some suggestion on the color here, which uh, I find one very interesting from Rob. He said Tropicaro. Tropicaro in Italian means very expensive. Very expensive. So very expensive white. 
well, uh, which is probably true. It definitely would be. Wouldn't be a cheap car to repaint, would definitely it? Definitely not. So have we you... got anything to add to this? Do we? I don't uh, know that we do. Like we've we've pretty I much covered it. We everything. covered a little bit of unboxing last definitely. week. We've we've covered some of the main differences between the the older the yep. older car and the brand new uh, LCR. So yep. top of the range kit with the RTC. Um, yeah, it's really good and I'm looking forward to getting it out. The old car was very competitive already, so very this one will be a massive upgrade, but still, if you have the BD10, you can upgrade. And yeah. there's a few things you can do. You don't have to do all these changes. The shock towers are probably one of the most important ones. The shock towers and perhaps the yeah. diaphragms and the O-rings. Yeah, and the bulkheads uh, potentially. And the bulkheads. So there's a couple of things you can do. You don't have to do them all. You can do no. them slowly. You can do them slowly. You can, you can upgrade right. your car. It's not a fundamental change. Absolutely. It's so more like an evolution a model, isn't it? That's right. So absolutely. It's like a so. BD 10.2. Hence That's probably why they've kept the name. Absolutely. Um, and so. haven't gone to a, a BD 11, if you will. Absolutely. So. Pretty good. So, Fantastic. what else do we have today? You, you received some uh, Aramax stuff? Is that I have case? received Aramax stuff. And have I've, you lost it? I've lost it. Well, so while you look for it, uh, we can probably... You, you have a quick look. Uh, you look for the car. I'm going to bring this back on the table here. So, last week Brett has been... Uh, Brett and Richard actually raced this car at the MCC. So we had the MCC Cup, which was uh, a 1.8 uh, off-road event. So in 1.8 you raced the buggies, which can be electric, nitro, and also the Trogi, which are slightly bigger. Here we go, and Brad, meanwhile, found the parts. I so found some parts. We can talk we about We said we raced this car last weekend. It was Richard raced really it for us, event. didn't he, at the EMCC Cup. The EMCC right. Hearns Hobbies Cup, 2021 Cup. And it was fantastic. It was my first uh, eight scale off-road event, uh, as was Richard's. Um, and this is the car that we've, we've shown a little bit on, on Facebook, on the Hearns Racing page. And uh, yeah, the practice day and the build and the painting and and it all came together really nicely. And um, he did us really proud. Um, yeah, and the car was fantastic. This and here, there is another one in uh, in build already. It yeah, didn't, it didn't take too long for you to get one. Didn't take too long. No, unfortunately, the the weekend at the track and uh, it's been expensive weekend really for you. Really enjoyed a really expensive weekend. There was a big buggy shaped hole in my heart when I left the track. So uh, okay, we sort had to about, fix that. We thought about fixing that, and uh, yeah, so it's something that I'm going to pursue. It was really good. It was even for a big event. It was quite relaxed. It was a yeah. real like community. People were helping people. People were lending spare parts. People were you know people were uh, pitting for other people, That's right. which you don't get in all the trick uh, like on road racing, which I've got the most of experience. You've got people you know putting their tools down and helping people pit for 30 minute. You've got 30 minute finals, which was fantastic. So. Refueling, refueling, kind of pit stops, tires coming off, cars cartwheeling. It was just was was really good. Yeah, really Absolutely. enjoyed it. We were blessed with good weather, uh, good good club, good track, good people. So looking forward to going back and, and trying it out for myself next time. Yeah, looking forward to see that. So